Hi, Haley. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Has anybody else joined? Um, yeah, some of our members are in the audience, so I'm going to promote them to panelists. So that's something that they have to click to accept. Um, but it will be it'll allow them to speak. Okay. Hello. I just got promoted. That's awesome. You did, yeah. <laughs> I clicked yep. on the regular link and then put in my email address. I put I wasn't sure which one I gave you guys. So I put in one and it said, you know, oh. I'm not authorized to be here. And I put in the other one and it brought me in, but I guess it brought me in as a observer. Oh, gotcha. I'll have to double check. Yeah. And you really don't want me commenting. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for inviting me in. No problem. Everybody get a chance to get out and enjoy this beautiful day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Actually, we discovered beautiful downtown Florence. Oh, yeah. I went to a diner there in the middle of Florence, and then uh, Cindy went to an appointment there. So Nice. Pretty excited. There's a place called the Pie Bar, so I guess it's just all pies or something like that. Yeah. 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 I actually haven't been there. I, I need to make it there because this is definitely pie season. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Hey, hi. How are you? Mark, Sarah. Good. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mark. Hi, Christina. I like Zoom calls because it's kind of like romper room. <laughs> yeah. Romper, stumper, bumper, boo. <laughs> It's worse than a tennis tournament for me because it isn't like I can just go back and forth with my eyes. I have to keep oh, growing. Yeah. Because... Yep. I don't know why, but the your faces appear in different squares at different times. I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's some logic to it, but it's lost on me. Does it have to do with when we're talking or? Yeah, it's voice act activated uh, yes. by voice. Yeah. So if let's you're... all talk at once and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens I did not hear that anybody couldn't make it. Did you hear from anyone, Haley? I did not. I, I did. Jacqueline is coming a little late. She has okay. another meeting and she will be joining us a little late today. Okay, great. Thank you for letting us know that, Christina. I'm sorry, everyone. I, you know, Good evening. Good early evening. <laughs> Hello. I'm, just, I'm coming from one thing right into the next. I just finished work. So I'm like trying to regroup and get myself mm -hmm. some nacho chips. <laughs> <laughs> but Hopefully I that'll do the trick. I can Enjoy. hear what Enjoy. you're saying, though. <laughs> yeah. I can hear what you're saying. Good. Good, good, good. Should we wait a couple more minutes, Haley, or you think um, we should? You can't. I mean, there is a quorum. So if you wanted to, you could certainly start. And we can just, you know, let others come in as, as they will. 
Okay. All right. Well, out of respect for everybody's time, I think I will get started. So I'm going to call to order the meeting of the Council on Aging, the October meeting. And um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18. This meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is also being recorded. Uh, I'm going to take roll call now. Um, Christina? Christina? Present. I'm present. Awesome. Dawn? I'm here. <laughs> yep, I'm here. Sarah? Here. Mark? Here. Dennis? Here. All right. Um, Terry? Chad? For Jacqueline. Okay. All right. First up is our public comment. Residents are welcome to express their views up to three minutes. The board will not engage in dialogue on the matter. During the public comment period, recognize members of the public with Haley's assistance. And when called on, please identify yourselves by stating your full name. Okay. So we have two people in the audience, one of whom is our state rep. Thank you for joining us. And the other person, or either of you, if you want to speak, you just raise your hand. And because I can see you, but Jean can't necessarily. So yeah, so if anyone wants to make a comment, all you have to do is click raise your hand. Um, and then I think you had that letter, right, that you received, Jean. Maybe we could start by reading that. Sure. Sure. I had difficulty printing it, so I'm going to try to read it off my phone. So my apologies if I stumble here. Um, this is from Karen DeSantis. I volunteered at the Amherst Senior Center as a receptionist for a year and thoroughly enjoyed meeting and helping seniors on my watch. Both my grown daughters recently had COVID, which had given me time to pause and as to my involvement with the public. I recently wrote Haley that I've decided to leave an important part of my life as a volunteer at the Amherst Senior Center, not only because of medical reasons, but because I've not felt safe there. This has been coming to a point at which I needed to make a decision. The recent outside fires around the building, as well as questionable people arriving here, one incident recently needed our police action, and my children not wanting me to stay has been paramount, including too many vagrants hanging around the parking lot to enter our building. There are many issues the Senior Center faces, and it's a disgrace to Amherst when we are surrounded by many new well-staffed centers to choose from. For example, Hadley is trying to deal with the influx from both Amherst and Northampton. I realize there are many financial improvements needed in Amherst, but come on. Thank you for your consideration. Karen DeSantis. Anyone really from the public? Because after the public, our general public, if we all have comments, we, we will can then contribute. Mm -hmm. Are there any hands, Haley? Um, I don't see any hands. And I was going to make a suggestion that we promote Mindy um, to speak as the council is kind of talking about their own concerns regarding the bank center and the issues that they, so if the group is amenable to that. Yeah. Nods. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm going to do that. Wonderful. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hi. Hi everybody. I'm, I'm really glad to be here. I'm sitting in my car, so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not on camera, <laughs> but um, I went to the bank center forgetting that it was virtual. Um, so I'm outside the bank center in my vehicle. Oh, sorry. Um, no, no, that's totally on me. It's like, oh, what a dumb thing that I did. Um, 
but I'm really glad to be here with all of you and to hear all, you know, whatever your concerns are. And I told Haley that I was going to try and make council and aging meetings more frequently because uh, I'm not feeling like I'm getting enough information on a regular basis about your needs and your concerns. Um, and so I'm all ears and that letter is concerning and I'm looking forward to hearing your discussion of a response to it and um, how I can be helpful or supportive. Well, thank you for joining us, Mindy. I will um, say as both a member of the Council on Aging and a volunteer at the Senior Center for the past almost like year and a half, um, I, I have a fair amount of feedback to, to offer you. Number one, I think under the adage of stating the obvious, our facility is inadequate. Um, we don't have sufficient space. And because we're very, we have serious space limitations, it really hampers Haley and staff and their ability to offer creative um, programs. There are lots of things we would love to do, but we don't have a kitchen. We don't have a gym. We don't have an art studio among a host of other things. And when, as a senior in town, when I, I look on either side of us, you know, Hadley's got a beautiful new facility. Northampton has a beautiful new facility. And you look at the variety of space they have. They can do so many wonderful things for seniors. And it's just, it's a very sad state of affairs that in our town, our senior center, we don't even have a building to ourselves. We're sharing that facility with numerous other departments. And um, it's sad and it's frustrating, especially when you consider we're the fastest growing population in town. And I well appreciate there are, are many um, facilities issues in our town, but um, it's it's time that we take this seriously and start working toward the future um, to expand expand the space and expand the offerings for seniors because um, there's lots of people that I think would be very interested and would really benefit from programs um, that the senior center could offer, but they're not coming because we're not able to offer them. Um, Additionally, I would just say clearly the bank center was not designed as a senior center. So it's lacking in many things that seniors really need. You know, lighting isn't great. Um, security is poor. I mean, really, we should just have one main entrance so we can kind of monitor who's coming in the building. That certainly is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, we had, and I'm sure Haley is apprised you, the recent incidents with fires and some people who had some mental health issues. It is very disconcerting. And I, cause I was working several days when we had some of these folks in and it's unnerving. You're not really sure, are we gonna be okay here? Or is this situation gonna escalate and, and deteriorate? So um, I do wanna just reiterate the need for, for cameras and improved security there. Additionally, I would just mention, um, and bathrooms. We don't have things such as pull cords. We have people who, you know, have balance issues or, you know, their physical mobility is really impaired. And we need those safety features in the facility. Can I ask if you, um, you know, I obviously I agree not only with your observations because they're observations and they're facts, right? So everybody should be agreeing that there are no pull cords and there should be better lighting, et cetera. Um, and I share as an Amherst resident, you know, sort of the, um, the frustration with seeing senior centers in surrounding towns um, and what um, Amherst seniors are able to enjoy despite great programming and a terrific staff and council on aging. Um, two years ago, or maybe three years ago at this point, I happened to have occasion to go to a meeting in the Ludlow Senior Center. And I was just like, oh my gosh, another one with like, you know, yoga. And I'm passing rooms where seniors are doing yoga, art. We're in this um, large room with a full-size kitchen. Um, yeah, it's, it's a stark comparison. So I'm wondering to what extent you brought this to council people and the town 
you know, we have an election this year. So I'm wondering if you've engaged with maybe candidates around the needs of the Council on Aging and if you've given them an opportunity to directly respond to the council on what their opinions are. I'm just curious. I know if I was running for election right now in this year, I'd expect you to bring me in front of you and say, okay, so what are you going to do for seniors in Amherst? Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering if you've engaged in any of that kind of education. We have. Um, haven't certainly hit all of the candidates, but um, I think for the folks that we've talked to thus far, there is certainly acknowledgement that our facilities are inadequate. And no sooner do they say that when they say, but we have these other projects on the, mm -hmm. our capital um, mm -hmm. campaign list. And obviously the senior center isn't one of them. Um, they don't seem as interested in trying to plan for the future. And mm -hmm. one of the things that I keep saying is I know we have four buildings on the list right now, but they're going to start coming off. Right. They're going to start coming off in the next year or two, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in the works for the school. And so I don't know if the town is fixated on just having four, but I really want the senior center to take that next slot because mm -hmm. I appreciate it. it's not going to be tomorrow. We're talking about the future, but the future starts now. We need to start laying the groundwork so um yeah. have you let people know that at the town that that's a and is that is that something that i don't even know the forgive my ignorance on this i'm not sure is that something that the council on aging needs to sort of vote on to say this is a priority and then you can do what you need to do to bring it to as a council to the town and to the, the town council i don't um, know that we that you would have to vote since it's an advisory board but I do know that as a group, you could take a vote to, you know, create a letter or, you know, mm. this group has actually invited town councilors into the bank center for other occasions, like um, when they were doing the debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. And I we certainly try to extend invitations for them to attend different programs and events, you know. Um, that we're coordinating the maybe, maybe there needs to be a specific event that talks about the uh, inadequacy of the building. You know yeah. what I'm saying, and that yeah, um, yeah. and yeah. so you can point out the. I mean, it doesn't have to be a long one because you don't have a lot of space, which is part of the issue. But um, you can talk about here's what we, we here's the kinds of things we would like to do that we don't have mm -hmm. the space for, and here's mm -hmm. some of the problems and deficiencies with the existing space. I happen to agree. I think the senior center should ultimately be on the list. I've made that recommendation to the town council in terms of if they had additional um, any ARPA funds to be able to do a project feasibility study. Um, I'm also more than happy to sort of work with you in partnership if um, to sort of um, see how I can be helpful with that. So it may be that, you know, there are a lot of competing demands in the town and I want to respect the conversations and discussions that are going on with the with the demands that are pulling on lots on government officials right now. But maybe there's a way that I, I can be helpful in identifying state resources to pursue at least some of this ground, the preparation kind of pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think you're right. It's it's a future oriented goal. And I'm, I'm thrilled to hear you say, you know, we're not looking to to knock anybody off the list. We just want to be on a list mm -hmm. uh, because I think there's been a lot of work to get that list formulated. And um, certainly we need a new fire station, you know, very badly. So um, yep. public safety is like a major um, thrust of local government. But uh, I think, you know, putting a senior center that um, has adequate space, security um, and sort of possibilities is like an important piece based on a couple of things. One, what you had mentioned that it's the fastest growing population in the area, but also because I, you know, as a community, we owe it to our seniors. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Um, I know, but just want to point out that Jacqueline's had her hand up. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. I'm late. Uh, something, a last minute thing came up for me. Yeah, I had to take care of it. Um, one of the things that concerns me is, yes, the building 
And I guess I'm more mindful of that um, when I wear the clergy collar and I see the impact that COVID has had on, on uh, the names of what we're doing um, and that that quote church concept is confined to the building. There are, I came onto the council because I thought it was senior services and I'm more conscious of that during COVID than I was uh, before there was a, a change in focus. And while I think it's very, very important that there be a place the senior center, there are seniors whose capacity, sometimes mental, sometimes physical, um, disallow them from being in the building. And my concern is providing services that are, may, the center might be a conduit through which that information became becomes known, but I think it's critical that um, the aging population be included. And I think the immobile and immobile for whatever reason, whether it be mental or physical, uh, I think that they get lost in the shuffle. Mm. And I saw that early on, um, in, in the COVID, during COVID, at the beginning of COVID. Uh, there are seniors who are homebound. Um, and I've had to deal with situations involving them, putting on my pastoral cap and uh, the seniors and their caregivers. I, I I think I think that that's important that even as we look to the future, the seniors of today uh, matter. Absolutely. You know, Jacqueline, I'm sorry, this is Mindy. Um, you know, I think that on the one hand, Amherst has, such a strong, deep bench around senior services, right? We've got Haley and the folks at the bank center. We've got Amherst Neighbors, which is a whole nother level of senior services. We've got other kinds of programs in town that also serve seniors. Um, and some of those seniors are homebound. Some of them are not, and they're very mobile. Some of them are looking to be in community with other people. Mm -hmm. Some are looking not to be in community with other people. Um, but I think you're right that we really have to kind of be mindful that we're talking about everybody. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the center, I think a senior center performs a very particular kind of role, right? It becomes a center of a, of a community for a population, for people who want to be in community. And it can also be the launching pad for services that go out to the home. Um, so it's it's not, I don't think it's, for me, it's not like an either or. I actually see yeah, it as- Yeah, yes. both and. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And there, there are some things that are available through federal and state government to be supportive of seniors who want to age or whose families like the idea of their aging in place. Yep. But for whatever reason, the advocacy that is needed to have this town participate in the state funded programs or for whatever reasons that this that this town chooses not to make those services or opportunities, I should say, available to seniors um, it is beyond me. But there are surrounding towns, for instance, uh, seniors who need to uh, make their houses accessible. And there are, from what I, I've been 
able to find out there are resources available, but Amherst doesn't participate. And that kind of startled me a bit. Well, I can't comment on that, but I can say that were to be prioritized by Amherst or were to be that I have a, I would have a constituent who would come to me and require it. And so it would require some advocacy municipally also. I'm here to help steer those resources to what the senior priorities are. So if it became a priority, but it was like, we just, you know, and a grant was written, I would really hope that the town or the senior center, whoever's running the grant, would loop me and the state senator in so that we could in fact, you know, exp not only express our support for it, but try to secure those resources. Yeah, and I, I just wanna say, you know, just for the record, um, we've done programs at the senior center on home loan modifications, which I think is one of the, the things that you may be talking about. You know, those are state grants where people can get money to modify, you know, for ramps or, shower yeah, bars yeah, yeah. um so yeah so if, if people call the senior center we can connect them to those resources and we haven't done a program in maybe six months or more but we have done them in the past so that people are aware of their the options that are out there i have to say when um you were speaking jacqueline it made me think about um people who can't get to the center and sometimes yeah. people can't get to the center because um it isn't an easy facility to find. There are parking challenges, depending on what time you choose to try to arrive at the center. Um, and it it brought up for me the, the silver shuttle, which mm -hmm. um, is a fairly new program for us in the, the need mm -hmm. to really expand that. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think, an invaluable service to our seniors who who either can't drive or shouldn't drive um, to be able to transport them to the center or to doctor's appointments or to the grocery store, wherever they need to go. And um, I think that's really important that we have the resources to be able to support um, offering that to our seniors and to be able to expand that. Right now, it's just a part-time program, but. I think um, the need is is there yeah. to expand it. Yeah, we oh. actually, I just did the math really quick. Mindy, we average 65 rides a month for a three day a week part-time van service program. So I think if, if we were to get the ability to expand to five days a week, you know, we, we could certainly double um, the number of rides that we're doing or thereabouts. And what about maybe even seven days because I know before I came onto the council, uh, I encountered a number of seniors. There were programs, for instance, at the university. Um, and if they were held at night or on weekends, uh, they couldn't they couldn't attend because it wasn't during the it was after quote the witching hours during the right. week and off the it was off the tablet at all on weekends yeah we can we can do tend to be a little harder um and jean christina has her hand up christina oh you're muted I want to say, I hope you're not waiting for a new building to have security. And what I see as a priority is for you to get right on the security, the cameras or whatever it is that you need to do in order for the seniors to not feel the way that that woman <clears throat> expressed herself, <clears throat> excuse me, in that letter. We can't wait until we have a new building to make that a priority. No, you're absolutely right. And um, when we had, I don't know if people want me to say it now or later, but um, when we had the second fire, I made sure that I made everybody aware of that problem and they put up 
they being the police department put up temporary cameras and that person since has been arrested and trespassed from the building. Um, so that particular individual, um, I don't want to say we've taken care of, but if they come back, um, there's there's steps we can take to ensure that they don't do that again. Um, well, I, I think I would much rather it not just be about one individual, <laughs> yeah. but the fact that the that the seniors need to feel safe, all seniors, regardless of what that safety issue entails. It could be a fire, it could be uh, uh, trespassers, whatever the issue is, seniors need to feel safe and there needs to be a comprehensive plan to make the seniors safe and to have the resources in that building. Yeah, I mean, um, well, let me just say one quick thing, Mark. And um, Well, we, we are missing Mindy. She's uh, gone. She's in the audience. I'm oh, okay. She's not showing up on my, oh, there we go. Thank you. I got this, I got disconnected from oh, okay. my internet, but I'm back on. Um, Came in through my phone this time instead of my laptop. Yeah, all I was going to say is that that's where I really need the council's help and, you know, and certainly at the state level where the, if I had the ability and the resources to do all of those things in a heartbeat, I certainly would, but I don't own the building, the town does. So there has to be some some more people rallying with me mm -hmm. to say, these are the things that need mm -hmm. to happen. These are the concerns that we have. We're losing volunteers. We're losing participants. Um, you know, I, I certainly... I'm not shy about saying how I feel, but I, I know that I need some help from, from people in this, um, on this committee. Okay. Mark, did you, you had your hand up before. You're good. No, I was just telling you we were missing Mindy. Oh, gotcha. ah. Ah. Okay. Can I, can I jump in and ask a question? Is that all right? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, Haley, have you done like, the or not you personally, but engaged with anybody to do like a of the building, both in terms of how participants and volunteers feel, but also like um, a safety, a, uh, like a public safety expert to go through and say, you could use this, you could use that. Like someone who's not necessarily considering the budget for the mm -hmm. items, just like ideally what would make the place safer. And uh, there may be, specific people in the community who are, who can do that kind of thing. Um, yeah. A place like um, engaged with somebody when they were developing their center. So we, I have not done like a community focused one, um, but we, I have invited the fire inspector and um, a member of the PD to do like an Alice active shooter walkthrough just to kind of identify what are the weak security points. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, when it comes to the building, you know, like we have a room where the entire thing is, or almost all of it is encased in glass. So, right. and there, there's no um, blinds or curtains for that room. So if somebody comes in, people are really out of luck in, in that space. You know, if somebody comes into the large activity room with the intent to cause harm, the exits are really, you know, you can maybe get to the exits, but depending on where you are, that might not be easy. Um, certainly with the back offices, I have a staff person who they, their office goes into our back room and into the hall. So if there was a threat on either side, they're not in a position where they can really be safe unless they could make it into my office or into Helen's office. Um, and that's the same for my admin assistant. Like they, they don't have a lot of window access to get out of. Right. Um, so it seems to me like there's like different layers or different reasons for people to feel insecure, right? Mm -hmm. Like what I'm hearing is, and forgive me for reflecting this back, but I'm trying to wrap my head around how what, it, what could be the next steps that might ultimately lead to sort of a comprehensive review. But there seems to be like there's security around active shooter or violence, there's security around fire, there's mm -hmm. security around personal safety, which could be both fires outside the building, but also full cords and bathrooms, like it could be yeah. um, sort of macro and micro. Um, and then there's like attitudes and feelings, right? Like that volunteer, like what would make people feel safe? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering if there's a way to sort of review each of these areas in one place, like in one document, 
to be mm -hmm. able to say uh, as a roadmap for how we go about addressing the issues, the, the attitudes and issues, the attitudes mm -hmm. and the real issues around security. Because I think maybe that's something, um, that's something that, you know, I want, I want you to think about. I can't promise, obviously, state money for, mm -hmm. but we can certainly look and see if there are funds available for that kind of review and study. Okay. Yeah, because we don't even have sprinklers. Possibly. Right. You don't have sprinklers? Like that. No, the bank center has been grandfathered in, so we don't actually have sprinklers. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Right. I, we don't I have know. any. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> So I think like those kind of, like putting that all in one document might be helpful in saying, mm -hmm. okay, so what are we going to do about this? Mm -hmm. That's an excellent suggestion, Mindy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know, you know, I can start looking um, at the state level to see if they have, I don't know if they have grants available for this kind of thing, but I certainly can start looking. Yeah. 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 We that would definitely tremendous. appreciate it. Yeah. Clearly the need is great. Mm -hmm. on every every front when you start looking at bang so yeah the seniors well, the staff staff most appreciative well the seniors for the well, I mean, yeah and you know a more secure senior center brings out more seniors and so yeah. that's the, and that's the whole idea right yeah. um yeah if we wanted to keep the population low we wouldn't fix it but we don't we want to be available Okay, I've got my march in order for at least this. Year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone else have anything else they want to share with Mindy? I don't. Jacqueline, your hand is still up. I don't know if that's sorry. Just... <laughs> okay, all right. Just didn't want to miss anybody. Thank okay. you. All right. Sure. I think that the one thing that might be helpful while I'm looking in this direction, and I'm not sure how you go about doing it in your direction, but it might be identifying. Um, a person, a company, an academic, I don't know who, okay. who would be the person who might conduct such a study. I think mm -hmm. that might be, because I don't, Kelly, you obviously have enough on your plate. Um, and I think this is really something like you kind of need like a, a, a senior, an, a, an expert on elder affairs and also make yeah. safe spaces mm -hmm. yeah. for elders. Definitely. I'll ask around and see if any anybody I know knows of anybody who might fit that definition, but you might want to also start looking around and see maybe what other communities have done about it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for uh, thank you. joining us, Mindy. Really appreciate well, I really appreciate it. it. I haven't really done it. I haven't really done anything yet. I just said I'm going to, We're here. I'm going to do something. Oh, I have uh, lots of I've notes though, Mindy, and I've got your name <laughs> next to them. So. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Um, but I also hope to make these meetings more frequently. And when I can't because of um, business in Boston, I'm going to ask my staff person to do so. Oh, um, so clearly this is important. Wonderful. Well, we certainly welcome having you or your staff join us. I think that that's really valuable because there's no shortage of things for us to tackle. Well, and don't be shy about asking me um, for information, support, or resources, okay? Awesome. Thank you. I can't always say yes, but I won't know what you need unless you ask me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks yeah. very much. Thanks for letting me crash your meeting. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for coming. All right. Next up is the director's update. Yes. So I sent around my little spreadsheet of activities. Um, so for the month of September, things were pretty are still pretty average, I would say, in terms of, um, you know, we had 20 service days, we had an average count of 25 people in the building. Um, we served over 600 people in the course of the month um, through either book care clinics or a meals program or, um, you know, various different activities, social work services, information and referral. Um, you know, as you can see, we, we do a lot of information and referrals. So when people have questions or they need support services, um, you know, we I always like to be there their first call so that we can kind of triage. Um, but we're, you know, we're doing 
a lot of social events too. You know, we have the cafe, we started doing drop in board games and card games, which is getting a, a little cult following um, and exercise is um, a perennial favorite. Uh, like I said earlier, we're averaging 65 rides a month, which is tremendous, um, you know, particularly given that Rob only works three days a week. Um, the biggest service calls that I can tell are medical appointments to Northampton. You know, that has pretty consistently won out as the biggest category of rides, but we're also doing a lot of grocery store trips. And I'm really happy to see that people are using us for to and from the senior center. Um, so those are just some, some at a glance figures. Um, you know, so in terms of attendance, I think everything is going the way that we want it to. Um, I do want to highlight some upcoming events. So we are going to take two trips in the Silver Shuttle. We're going to go to the Mead Art Museum and we're going to go to Yankee Candle. Um, so in November, we'll tour the Mead Art Museum and then we'll go have lunch at the Smithsonian Chatter House and then um, Yankee Candle. What more could you ask for around the holidays? Um, so again, these are going to be really limited in scope. That bus only seats eight people. Um, but for people who can't afford to take the the bigger trips that the friends do, this is a really great local alternative. Um, you know, it gets people out of the house. It gets them connected. Um, so I'm happy to do a few more trips. Um, we're also going to be doing a our own version of a festival of lights, which means I'm going to get a lot of Christmas lights or not Christmas lights, just lights. I should holiday say lights. holiday lights and um, just to make the senior center brighter, you know, we're, we're always talking about, it's really dark in there. That's particularly true once it starts getting darker earlier. Um, so I wanted to kind of light up people's day. And um, so that will be Friday, December 1st. We'll string up lights. We'll have hot cocoa. We'll put on a fake fire on YouTube. Um, and so people can just join us at one o'clock um, to, to decorate a little bit. And we're also going to be doing one thing that might sound counterintuitive at first, but I always like to do grief programs around the holiday. You know, as much as it can be a joyous occasion, it is still a time of loss for, for many people. So we are mm -hmm. experimenting mm -hmm. with dancing with joy and sorrow. Um, mm -hmm. So Madeline Farr, who coordinates our belly dancing class, she's going to do a three day workshop on kind of expressing your grief through dance. Mm -hmm. um, and I and all that information is in the newsletter. I, I can't do her justice, but um, you know she's really dedicated and she actually created this kind of special for us. And um, she spent a lot of time thinking about it. And this so, this year, I think probably as much as last year, that that's very timely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, just a quick blurb about Stop and Shop. So we were selected by the store leadership team at the Hadley Stop and Shop to be a part of their community bag program. So what that means is that during the month of November, if you go to Stop and Shop and you buy their special community um, community bags, we get a dollar of every bag that's sold. Um, so that's nothing that we have to really do in terms of work except for spread the word and hopefully people will go and, and buy a bag or two um it's a good way for us to raise some money uh, i'm gonna skip on my skip around on my director's report a little bit because just thinking about you know holidays and things being not always so pleasant or cheerful um i've i'm proposing that the coa sponsor clause for a cause and so this is something that I did um, in Bernardston. Well, it was there when I got there, but I really enjoy the program. So essentially what this program will do is to target homebound, lonely, isolated, or just any senior who we know needs some holiday cheer. Um, the premise is really simple. We're gonna accept donations at the senior center until a certain date, puzzle books, um, little lotions, lip balm, cocoa, you know, just small things and preferably individually wrapped. Um, and then we'll pack gift bags and that'll be kind of a communal event. So again, dates are in the senior spirit, but as a group, we'll pack up bags and then we'll be recruiting volunteers to take a list of names and deliver those bags to people. Um, I had the occasion to deliver a bag um, before I left my last job and it was really heartwarming. Um, you know, the the person invited me in. We ended up having tea. We talked for like forty five minutes, and it really meant a lot to him that somebody thought of him around the holidays because his wife had passed and he lived by himself, and there wasn't really anybody in his life he could go to. Um, 
So I, I would be really proud if this council could sponsor the same type of program. And, you know, if people want to contact your local bank, contact, if you have a, a friends group, if you have, um, if you're still working and you have some colleagues, you know, just any way that we can get these small trinkets to make bags. Um, and then you can join us um, to pack the bags if you'd like. And then I, I can tell you that they'll be delivered the week of the 18th of December. So if anyone wants to sign up to take a couple names, um, you know, that would all be appreciated. Um, and so that, um, so that's that. Uh, any questions on that program? I have a question, Kelly. Yeah. First of all, I love this idea. Thank so you. I up as a volunteer and for packing. Okay. Um, but I'm wondering if you have a, do you have a list of the kinds of items you want folks to buy and contribute to like the uh, inventory for these gift bags? I'm yes. thinking that this is something that I can at least post in my newsletter. I can post it on social media. Um, but I'd like to give people an idea of what sort of things are necessary, are desired. You know what I mean? Yes. Yep. I've got a list and I have a flyer for the event. So I can, Please. we can blast that around. Terrific. Please email to me and mm -hmm. sign me up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions on that program? Cool. You know, I think it's a great idea. And I, I really like the idea. I, when I substituted for the meal, uh, delivering some meals a month or so ago, I, even just that delivering the meals, mm -hmm to people was, um, and I brought my grandkids with me and whatever, and it was really a good opportunity to see, for them also to see how, you know, other people live and whatever, but everybody was grateful. So I can only imagine, sign me up for the delivery thing too. Excellent, thank you. Um, and Terry, you have your hand up. I just have a question on the community bag day. Mm -hmm. I mean, the bag program, Yeah. how much are the bags and what's in them? Is it just like a um, stop, it's just stop a, bag? Or? Yeah, it's just a, an empty tote bag. I think I think they're $250. Oh, so we, we get a, shop a, a good cut. Yeah, it's a okay. stop and shop community program. Um, yeah, I think they're, you'll be by the checkout counter. Um, okay, okay, great. Thanks. All right, and let me see. So we have a couple big, well, first I'm gonna talk about the Title III grant. So we were lucky enough to be the recipient of a Title III grant for our Memory Cafe. We've been awarded $4,000 from Highland Valley Elder Services, um, which will be used with administrative costs, promotional costs, and food and entertainment expenses. Um, so this is really fantastic because this program is probably one of the biggest expenditures that we have at the Senior Center. Um, so having the ability to offset some of the costs is going to be tremendous. Um, you know, there, there is reporting and monitoring required with this grant, but I think it's also a way for us to get some recognition for what we're doing. Um, I, I've, I've talked about this before, but it is one of our most well-attended programs. And it's certainly in terms of participants, our most diverse program. It really brings in people from all walks of life um, just to come and chat and have coffee and enjoy a group activity. Um, so I'm, I'm really pleased that we we got this award. I'm always pleased when we can augment our budget, um, but I'm particularly happy with this one because it, it was their most competitive grant year and I, I quite a number of organizations apply, but we were lucky enough to be accepted. Questions? Cool. Um, big changes are coming to the Senior Center. Um, in terms of staffing, we have a new admin assistant, Diana Wheeler, who has is so lovely. For anyone who's interacted with her, you know that that's true. Um, and I, I'm really glad to have her and have her part of the team. Um, you know, she's doing a tremendous job and she comes up with a lot of experience and certainly a lot of, a lot of town of Amherst experience. Um, and you know, she, she's working really well uh, with the seniors who come to the center. And then for every loss, I mean, for every gain, there is a loss, and Helen McMillan will be retiring at the end of December. So her last day will be uh, the 31st, and I'm going to start looking for, um, you know, a new program coordinator slash social worker as soon as possible. Um, so with the hope that we can get some overlap between the two of them, um, you know, Helen has 
been with the senior center for for many many years and has made um really just really helped a lot of people in the community and our particular older adults from you know fuel assistance applications to advocating for additional medicare um you know coverage and just really being there for the people who need her um so we'll we will definitely miss her and um you know i'll, I'll probably announce at the next meeting what our plans are to kind of recognize her for her many years of service um other changes include the meal program so um as you all know we do a meals on wheels and we also do grab and go meals um since the loss of our program coordinator donna hancock in mid-july julia um, our volunteer and outreach coordinator has been filling in to oversee the the entire distribution of that program um, since i started in amherst it has been the one program that really kind of dominates every day. Um, there have been times when we have three volunteers who call out to deliver meals and it's all hands on deck. All of my staff have to go out and deliver meals. We, we, we kind of all work for this program and it leaves us with less time to do the main functions of our job. So we um, Highland Valley has come in and they are supervis um, supervising that program. So they are responsible for everything. They do all the meals, all the reporting, all the billing, all the scheduling. Um, so we no longer have to be caught up with those administrative tasks. Uh, and that's at no, um, no service disruptions. Many of our volunteers have transitioned over to working with Highland Valley. So anyone who wanted to volunteer still was able to do that. Um, you know, and it, it really has just ended up helping you know, all of us get back to our core function, our core job functions. Um, and, and it's in line with what other senior centers are doing. We were really the standalone in terms of operating the program entirely ourselves. And like I said, it was not a day went by when something wasn't amiss or we didn't have to pitch in to help because somebody had called out that day. So that was good. Um, we are also making big changes with our newsletter. So in an effort to be more environmentally friendly and offset our overhead costs, we are gonna be pivoting to a primarily email-based distribution. And that's gonna happen as early as January and February. So this will be our final printed uh, mass mailing, our, our final 3,400 newsletter distribution um, go around. So I don't want people to be alarmed hard copies will still be available at the senior center. It will be posted on the town website. You can subscribe or you can just view the newsletter archive. And for those people who can't or aren't comfortable with the computer, they can call us and request a paper copy. Um, but, you know, we, we are spending on average maybe $5,000 per distribution. So for those of you who can do mental math, times that by six. And that's a lot of money. Um, and it's it's money that every dollar that the friends pay for that is a dollar we can't do programs with because there's just not enough funds to go around. Um, so it, it's a difficult decision, but ultimately, financially speaking, it is the smartest course of action that we could possibly take. Um, and again, you know, we're, we are making efforts to make sure that people are still connected with us some way or another. Um, Christina, you have your hand up. Yeah, when I first started, that's the first thing that I said. Was it? <laughs> but but nobody listens, <laughs> you know. Um, I even did a demo of the uh, online version. Mm -hmm. I went step by step, showing the group. Jacqueline was in that meeting. Uh, how the Northampton Center has adopted a digital copy. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you can always get a paper copy if if you're the, the person that needs it. But it's two years later and now it's happening. And that's a lot of money that could have been saved. Yes. But no one listened. No one listens. No, it's, it's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but but we got there in the end. Um, so that that is a good thing. Cause like you said, it's just, you know, it's a needless expense really. Um so that's meals, newsletter, staffing. So that brings us to our building security. So we've, we've been talking about it a lot. And I, I did send some pictures around three weeks ago or something. 
Um, so we did have a little rash of fires. We had an individual who was cooking in front of the bang center. Uh, it happened on a Sunday and then it happened again on a Wednesday. So that was two within only a few short days. Um, we did have a whole team of investigators come in on the second day. And like I said, that particular individual has been um, trespassed from the building, uh, but it doesn't really solve the, the larger issue. And if you go to the bank center, you'll still see a little char mark out front. Um, but I did want to do my due diligence and let this council know that that is happening. Um, you know, certainly there were issues with security, but well before I step foot anywhere near the building. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, like, like we talked about with Mindy, uh, you know, being a little bit more aggressive with our town counselors and seeking some state support um, will hopefully get us where we need to be and make people feel a lot more comfortable at the bank center. Any other questions? How okay. is the um, email collection going, Haley? It's really slow. So we shall see. Um, the, the thing to know, too, is that if we really felt like there's been a significant dip in terms of newsletter distribution, we still have the capacity to do a mass mailing. You know, we could send a newsletter to everybody 60 and older in town and say, hey, did you know? And it would still be more cost effective because it could just be like a one page distribution. So that's mm -hmm. something where even if we don't have the outcome we want the first time, I'm actually I'm not terribly worried because it's going to be July, um, not July, January and February, which are our slowest months anyway. So if we mm -hmm. don't get it and it's slow, we do have the ability in the spring, like say when we do our open house to say, hey, did you know that we're here and you can catch up on all of our activities by doing X, Y, and Z. So we can yep. mitigate that if we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also wanted to say this before I forgot, uh, Mindy is going to be at the Senior Center for Lunch and Conversation with us on Tuesday, November 14th at noon. So she is gonna come in and she wants to hear from people, everything Senior Center. Um, so anyone is welcome to join us for lunch. What it will, what the lunch will be is yet to be determined, um, but we will be having it on Tuesday the 14th at noon. And that's all I had to say. Okay. Thank you. A lot yeah. going on. Yes. All right. Oh, Terry has her hand up. Oh. Terry? I have a question about the pro program's um, position. Is it a program supervisor, program director? What is it? Uh, we have an activities coordinator. The one that's see. online? Yes, because the, the other one hasn't okay, been posted activities. yet. Okay. So that is a part-time position. Um, it's someone that's going to be responsible for scheduling activities, for overseeing activities. Um, you know, we, we need a lot of help with the scheduling. It, it takes a lot of effort to be looking at, you know, what are other senior centers doing? Who could we do? You know, how can we scale up this program or target a new demographic by doing a particular kind of program? So I really need help with that and that's what the activities coordinator will be doing okay was helen doing that job um she did it but more focused on like the social service aspect so she's overseeing like brown bag our caregiver support services um a lot of the referrals and certainly case management but this is going to be more like so when we do our memory cafe instead of me coming in and having to make coffee and cut pastries and wipe down tables this person would do all of those things and then i can sit at my desk and plan out where do we want to be in six months so that's that's the, the key difference between okay. her uh, the activity coordinator and helen's position okay okay um, thank you Okay, moving on to old business, our calendar review. I don't know if you can bring it up on the screen, Haley. I don't know if I if I have the link anymore. Okay. Well, we're still in October and there was um the uh the health fair. Oh yeah, right? that was really fun. That was a great day. Um we had about 65 people show up. We had 20 different providers. 
Um, we even had a gentleman who created a wheelchair prototype, which is really fascinating. And it was something that you could operate off from the chair and it had certain, I'm not the inventor. It's, this is a really condensed version of what it was, but um, it also had features for caregivers. Like there's no like back bar on a wheelchair. So you end up kind of hurting your back if you have to stand the person up and pull the wheelchair for you. So he had put a bar in that you can put your foot on and safely raise the chair up or there's different accommodations you can make near the handles that would allow the person to like seat it in different positions. And um, he even had things like, it looked kind of like an outdoor lawn chair cover, but so that it would allow more breathing in the person's back so that they're not like getting all that like sticky plastic on them. So it was really cool. And like I said, it, there was a lot more to it, but he, really? that was amazing. And um, we did have the Gazette there and 22 News came. We always like to be in the paper, get mm -hmm. our stuff out there. Um, but it was really nice. And, you know, people had a good time. We were able to showcase some of the the new promotional items that we purchased. We were just, um, distributing flashlights and little reflective whistles, which are really popular. We also put out Dennis's beautiful display board with all those wonderful pictures. <laughs> so it was really, it was fun. You know, I didn't, I always like more turnout, but I, I was really satisfied with the people who came and just people were like, oh, I didn't know that they provided this service or that service. So that's what all you really want. Um, I did find, let me share my screen. So what we- now you can all see this calendar. So what we have listed for November is, there's an AARP grant, a community challenge grant, which I'm gonna, um, invite the grant subcommittee to take a look at, and next month we can talk in greater detail, but um, assuming we could be successful with this, this was something I saw last year, like a week before the deadline. And the deadline for this, I believe is in March. Um, so I think it, it may be helpful for us to start thinking about um, what we might want. And this also might segue nicely into our next thing, which is going to be the age and dementia. Um, looking at the action plan, we were scheduled to um, pick a goal. One thing that I just want to throw out that I um, think would be useful for us to do, and this is listed, although not under a particular month, and that is to go either go visit another um, senior center, local senior center to get ideas and meet with their council on aging. So um, I would like, um, if any of you are interested in that, if you would contact me directly and then we can um, coordinate something. But I, I think that would be really valuable for us as we look to kind of identify the deficiencies in bangs and start creating our wish list for um, what we would like in the future. So um, can I make a suggestion? I'm so sorry? I, can I make a suggestion on that? Absolutely. Let's start with Northampton. And I say that because I regularly get together with Kim Park, who's their director, and I'm sure she would be very willing to have her COA and our COA have a little play date together. Um, and I would also throw out there that, you know, maybe if anyone is also a member of the friends group, that would be something that you could also do as well is meet other friends groups and see what they do and how they fundraise and so on and so forth. Nice idea. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I'd be very right. happy to do that. Okay. Wonderful. And so if anyone else is interested, if you just want to shoot me a, an email, um, that would be great. But I think that would be a really valuable activity for us. And then obviously December, we've got lots going on. I'm very excited about the clause for a cause. I think that's really going to be um, wonderful for folks as well as the other the other in-house programming. Yeah, so. which I did add. So I updated that and I added the service incentive grant, which also is due in November. Okay, excellent. All right. I want to. Um... I, I am asking, wanting to ask, 
I know that it's a catchy phrase, clause for cause. Mm -hmm. We have some people in the community who are not celebrants of Christmas. And is there some way that that can be taken into consideration? It can be. Um, you know, in terms of marketing this program, it is, it's catchy. People will remember it. It'll stick in your head. You know, when I'm, I'm in a marketing class and like those things are really important. The, the emphasis is less on making it any specific holiday related. It's more just gift giving, which I think you could make the argument that it would still be appropriate in that sense. But if other people have a different name, they need to let me know really soon because that's, well, actually it's already in the newsletter. Um, but if we were to backtrack, that's something that would have to be decided on like immediately because then I'd have to go in and change other promotional materials and, you know, we'd have to get the wording out. We, we want to be advertising this program come November so that we have at least a whole month to get donations. Um, and then it would take time for me to like revamp my material. So if the group wants, to talk about that, I would definitely encourage that we do it now so that I can make those changes and get things ready to promote. Um, and I'm, I'm sharing my screen, so I can't I'm see. Just, yeah. Um, if people are raising their hand, I can't see it because I'm sharing my screen. So you can just unmute yourself or if Jean can tell. Um, looks like I see Christina with her hand up. Yeah. Can we can we pause for cause? Pause. You know, meaning like, stop what you're doing and support this cause. Yeah, pause. Yeah. P a u s e for cause. Yeah. I'm not sure people would get the connection, but again, I mean, if there, if there's more. Is there a way of using the word want. holiday instead? Holiday for a cause? What did you say? I'm just trying thinking of my head. That, that's all. Um, I, well, how I'm, would you use it in the sentence? How about cause, uh, how, cause for a holiday? Reverse it? Just a thought. The marketing student in me is saying not as catchy. You I want know. something like short and sweet, but... You know. You know, all I can say is I've done this program in other communities. I think that if, if you put the emphasis on the title, you're losing the fact that it's really about the seniors and making their lives better around the holidays. I mean, the reality is that there is a holiday connotation because it's the holidays, but the holidays also make people really lonely. Um, you know, it, obviously it's, it's, it's my program, so I'm, I'm going to bat for it, but I really feel like it's, that shouldn't be the the main thing that people connect on. It really is like, like when I went to that person's house, I wanted to cry so much because he just, it, what it meant to him was if, you know, 45 minutes of my time was everything to this person. It's, it's not like, it's not about the clause part. It's not about any of that. It's about making somebody feel like in that 45 minutes, they have your full attention and that they're still a person and not forgotten about, not collecting dust in some corner. So I'm, I'm going to go to bat for it pretty I, hard. And I think, I think the, the pause, the winter pause for a cause uh, would still keep the, the rhyming piece there. That actually sounds good. Winter what about pause, winter what about pause for a cause? What about something like holiday happiness? No, I don't know about that. Then I you, like, you need you need I, the I, cause I, part because that's like the, really I important. I like the cause. I like the cause part. I agree that cause should stay in it, and uh, and why not? Why shouldn't we pause for this great cause? Uh, you know. I agree Maybe. with Hadley. I agree with Haley though. I don't, I wouldn't know what that meant. That wouldn't, that doesn't, I, I, it's, it rhymes, it's catchy, but I, it would go past me. Be, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't understand that, I guess. 
And and one of the one of the things I think the there's a, a spirit of the time which takes us outside of of our realm. Um, I'm an ordained Baptist preacher, and um, even so, I you know I think the there there are people elderly people in the community. Um, who do not, as I celebrate Christmas, they do not celebrate Christmas. But the, there's a, a the season. There's there's something in the air that's electric, and if I could re keep in mind what their what their frame of reference is, and and honor that, and and engage and and stretch myself a little bit. Um, it speaks to the idea of being in community. Mark? How about just a pause for a cause or the cause? But it's still, like Sarah said, I mean, you still wouldn't know. Like, when well, you, I'm just, when, I'm just, well, I ahead, know. <clears throat> but like, when you're trying to design a program and you from my perspective we have done a really poor job as a as a senior center as a council in getting our name out in the to the community we really have virtually no presence a program like this is something that people will latch onto. it's something that is immediately recognizable it's something that you can promote people will get behind the idea i understand and even if, if even if you don't celebrate christmas you could still get a gift bag. We would be more than happy to just help you feel better. But we need to be really strategic in the way that we start marketing ourselves because we don't have anything. We need to kind of set some things aside and think about the fact that we have no community presence. Something like this, you can put on a flyer, you can post that on Instagram, you can put that flyer up in your business, you can have a collection basket, we can go to insurance companies and banks and say, hey, post a flyer for this program in your lobby, and people will contribute to that. That is a really great way to greatly expand our community reach. It gets us great publicity. Aside from being a really good program, it also affords us the opportunity to go and promote that on in media, on the television, in radio. I think that we, we're talking about being strategic and we're talking about future plans. Part of that needs to be promoting ourselves in a much better and more streamlined way. You know, I, I've been a director for many years now. I, I have a flair for marketing. I have a flair for selling things. I, I, I am really advocating that you keep this because it does what it's supposed to do, which is when you hear it, you know what you're signing up for, you have an idea of what it is, it's easily repeatable, it's easy to put a hashtag next to it and blast that all around Facebook and Instagram. Those are the kind of things that I think we need to consider more right now because we don't have anything else to fall back on. We can get, we can do different things once we have a, a base, like a, a base of people who understand us and who follow us, but we don't have that right now. So we need to be really careful in how we develop these programs so that we can meet that need. I, 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 will, I, just, I, I will let it be, but that still, that speaks even more loudly to the reason that it would be important to consider people whose frame of reference, whose cultural context is not my own. I disagree because it, it's a program for everybody. It's not a program that's being divisive. It's not reflective of that at all. It's a program with a really simple message is that we're giving a gift, which is what clause represents. We're giving a gift for a particular reason to help people who are homebound and isolated. I have a question. If clause has an E behind it, I'm okay with it. Is that okay. what I heard was Santa yeah. Claus. That's yeah. what I heard yeah. immediately, which probably provoked the reaction that you got from quite a few of us. And if it's a clause for pause with an E, ending with an E, I'm okay with it. Let it be a clause. Yeah, yeah. 
That's what I'm saying. That's because it doesn't include everyone. Yeah, it doesn't. When it's specifically Santa Claus, it really does not. And if you want maximum participation, somebody who sees that is going to say, well, I'm not going to support that. You know, Yeah. yeah. I'm of a different religion. I want to be all the religions, the people yeah. of various religions sort of bump up around that time of the year, as you said. Everyone wants to give. Everyone wants to be charitable. It's the best part of December, in my view, is that everyone is peaceful. Everyone becomes yeah, yeah, enthralled yeah. by the, you know, the idea that there's all these religions celebrating something special right around the same time. Yeah, yeah. There's the Kwanzaa, and it doesn't even have anything to do with Christmas. But everyone is putting something good out there, some goodness out there. And yeah. if it's a clause ending with an E, then let it be. But when you take away the E, then you're being only marketing yeah. to a specific group of people. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's hard. It's hard to go outside of our frame of reference. And it's important to reach out outside of our frame of reference if we're talking about a community a diverse community um yeah yeah some people will stop immediately Yeah. So, I mean, maybe we just put it to a vote. I, like I said, I disagree and I have experience with this that I think is really relevant. And I do want to say, because I have had people on this council say otherwise, I do put myself in other people's shoes. I think a lot about what it's like to be an older adult If in regard, I think a lot about what it's like to be the African-American man who's a Vietnam veteran who comes to the center and just wants to hang out and play cards. I think about the people in the wheelchairs who come every day to play puzzles. I think about the person whose legs are gonna be amputated soon and what it must be like to him to go about life. I spend a lot of time thinking about that and that's what makes me really good at my job. Something like this, you know, again, and I'm happy to defer to whatever the vote is, but I, I want to make sure that I say my piece. This is still something people would gravitate towards and still understand. You know, it's, it, you know, and the way that people do that is they're not looking at it right here on a screen. They're looking at it in terms of a flyer that has more information about the program, that has pictures of older adults that we work with, that you understand the program when you come and you volunteer and you help us pack bags and you realize like, wow, there's a lot of people in the community who need this kind of program. Um, you know, I think sometimes the way that I hear from certain people is that like, there's no regard paid towards that. And there really is. And I spend a lot of time trying to develop things that would, are good for everyone and trying to make people feel like the senior center is a place where they want to go. And since I've been here, we have some of the most diverse programs in terms of participant base. Something like the, the Memory Cafe is a great example of that. You know, I have really strived to do that every day that I go to work. And when I come to you with these kind of ideas, it's because I have experience working with older adults and with marketing and with program development. And I'm telling you, it's a really good thing. And I, I just want to, I just want to say that because like I said, there, not to be too pointed, but there have been numerous people who have said that to me um, on this board. And I really want to be clear about my commitment to it being inclusive. Well, I did not say that, and I am not attacking your integrity as an employee and as a person committed to the work you do, because otherwise you wouldn't be doing this work. We're just going over a specific word and pointing out that that word was sort of like not inclusive if it if if someone did not believe in that word. And people were just giving suggestions. That's all. I mean, and then what you do is entirely up to you. And if this board take a vote, so be it. 
whatever prevails, prevails. I think it's an excellent program, actually, you know, and, and no one's attacking your integrity in the work that you're doing. It's excellent. If yeah, I... and it wasn't meant just for, for you. There have been some other comments made by some people who are not here um, that have contributed to that. If I could make a suggestion that we just make sure the whatever collateral materials we have don't have like Santa Claus jumping down a chimney or Christmas trees and no. stuff like that. It's it's so that I'd be willing to go with it if that that word was there, but it wasn't it was clearly not focused on Christmas. That yep. would be the, a, the imagery is just compromise. like gift bags, you know, yep. presents. That's really the the center of the imagery that would be used on any promotional material. May I add, since yeah. my hand is up, uh, I'm uh, Haley. I'm I'm behind you on on this one, uh, primarily because I draw from my many years of experience of working in the newspaper business. Uh, one of the things that I had to do when I was working for the the Worcester Telegram and Gazette as a staff photographer it was that I had to go to all kinds of ethnic festivals all the time, every basically every summer. There was just a whole bunch of them. The whole city would just essentially erupt in all these different things. Albanians, Romanians, absolutely. The Greek festival was a big deal, all this kind of stuff. And every single time I was greeted very, very warmly. I had to turn food down. It was extraordinary. And it was all based on what I what I, I learned on the remarkable diversity of our society. We live in a very, very heterogeneous place where inclusion should basically be all about the letting appreciating your neighbors and and that's why I'm, I'm sort of looking at this situation about when it comes to saint patrick's day i wear a little green i'm not irish at all and i would appreciate it if as far as Christmas is concerned, I, I, you can't, you just can't dodge it. It's It surrounds you. It's the biggest retail season of the entire year. So to do something kind in, in, in its name, I think is awesome. That's it. Thank you. Dennis, I, yep. I, don't, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, about doing something, but all of the implications, there are so many stories behind the story of experiences outside of the experiences that some of us have had. Okay. And 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 I think it's a very creative uh push for something. Um, but as I, yeah, I, I celebrate the holiday. I'm, I'm not into the materialism piece of it personally, but, but that is not why other people, uh, some other people, uh, have a different perspective mm -hmm. and it just, it just hits me hard. I worked in an Appalachian community uh, in teacher court a number of years ago. And um, there, there's so many different interpretations. I, I didn't have any idea that the experiences of the people that I was working with, the students I was teaching, the parents I was visiting, the experiences were what they were. And I had to back off and come on not as the savior or the sal the one the salvation to to impose my way of doing uh into a situation and feel that they need it just to understand or appreciate and it's not it's not a criticism of you Haley uh but it's that that shadow that many of us live in um and 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 what I cited was one of the few experiences I had where it, I, I, I asked, aha, it was an aha moment. 
and making it real. For some oh, I, I appreciate that it's not attacking, but like you said, I mean, if you if you're aware that there are other experiences, why can't this just be one of those now, flavors? I why am, and you, you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The people who who will be expected to absorb it and appreciate it. But don't you um, think we can mitigate that by demonstrating what it's really about? I mean, they may not get it year one, but if it's something that we keep doing, don't you think people would appreciate that, that that's not what it's about? It's about something that's a lot more deeper and more poignant. Right. I. I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to halt our be. discussion because the clock is ticking on us and um we have other things that we have to get through um in I for one have to leave at 6:30 so um I think this program is uh, a wonderful thing for us to undertake um and I would out of respect for everybody's discussion, would like us to vote so that we can come to a conclusion on this so Haley can move ahead and then um, we can we can tackle our next item. So um, I guess Amen. ask, raise your hand if you are in support of calling the program um, now I can't even remember what is clause for a cause, mm -hmm. right? Is that right, Haley? Is that the yes. name? Clause for a cause. Okay. If you're in favor, put your hand up. Okay. Oh. All those opposed. Right. I'm sorry. I'm not seeing a full screen. Well, here, let me do this. There we go. That's better. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's try this again. Put your hand up if you are in favor of clause for a cause. Okay. All right. Hand on the screen. There we go. Oh, um, sorry. I'm I'm doing this because I can't find it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a darkened room. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i think if i if i can count i think it passed yeah there was six hands up that's what okay. i thought okay. but i think we need an amendment i heard the gentleman say that uh the poster he would not be opposed to it if if it was cause for clause but it didn't have uh a santa yeah. jumping down a chimney and yeah. i heard uh, Haley say that it was going to have images of seniors and bags of gifts and that would make it more inclusive if there were brown people yep. and there were people in wheelchairs et cetera, et cetera. so we need mm -hmm. an amendment to say that we will do this if these things are included yeah I agree With I'll all respect, happily I, do that I, anyway yeah. yeah, I was just going to say that, that and... should be kind of matter of course for any of our, um, you know, advertisements for programs. So, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So hopefully everybody did their homework because our next item is the age of dementia friendly. We were looking at the action plan and we um, asked well, everybody to select a goal. Um, I don't know, given our time that we are going to be able to, um, finish on this. So I'm wondering well, next month. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. So well, what I would ask month. though is could folks email their goal in? Cause it would just help us get an idea if we have, if we're all over the map, which I think is a good chance we would be, um, or if there's some consensus around a particular topic that it looks like there's great interest. We are we are gonna discuss it, but obviously we don't have the time this evening. So if you would either, um, I guess, email me, I'll compile them and, and share them out. Thank okay. you. Okay, whatever goal you, you selected. Okay, new business, and this is timely. Um, we need to elect officers. Um, my 12 months 
his chair has come to a conclusion. I believe I'm allowed another 12 months, but, um, and Dennis is vice chair and we currently have a big opening for secretary. So first want to throw it out. Does anybody want to nominate themselves for any one of these positions? The pay is awesome, by the way. <laughs> you can't lie to people. It's terrible pay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'd like to nominate Dennis to continue on as vice chair. Thank you. John second. Everybody in favor? I second that. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, okay. Wonderful. All right. So we have a vice chair. Christina has a question. You have my a question? Hand, I think she was voting. Was, my, oh, you, my I'm hand sorry. was up for the vote. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. 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 Awesome. I will continue as chair unless somebody else would like to take the seat. I'm I in second, favor. I recommend I second your nomination. There you I go. Second. Janine. Yes. What's that, Terry? I recommend you. Oh, thanks. To be in the <laughs> chair. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> All right. Maybe and do we have any good reports to be secretary? Okay. <laughs> Right now we're going well, on. Don's going to eat in for two months and then. Yeah. So yeah, then I'll do it for two. Yeah. And then we'll need another two. So that will be coming up, folks. Yep. So please volunteer. Otherwise, we will. I will be begging and that won't be pretty. All right. Next up is the <laughs> approval of minutes from September. Hopefully everybody had a chance to review those. Thank you, Dawn, for sending those out. Anybody have any changes or edits? I corrected a spelling error I found earlier. Uh, I uh, picked with a C and it should be P-I-C-K, but that's the only thing I corrected, so. It's a pretty good job. Yeah. Terry, you, you left my up? name at the bottom instead of he left my name at the bottom of the page oh, did instead I? of oh, his. I can he correct that unless you want to submitted by Terry Carr. <laughs> I'll I'll see. If sure, I, if you want to give it to me, I'll take it. I'll yeah. resubmit it with that change in it. Thanks for <laughs> noting that. Okay. Otherwise, can we have no, a if we're doing spelling down. errors. My name is uh, Lynn Deckel Lynn instead of Deckel Line L Y N. Okay. But they were the minutes were they they pulled up memory very quickly. Brought just, them alive. I just gave you the wrong name. That's all, right? <laughs> no. And Don, and Don, I don't have an H. You don't have an H. No one. Place oh, I, I got it. Know, okay, no, I got I it. So I'm a, I'm a no Hr. No H. No H. I'll fix that. Um, do these things go somewhere, by the way, once, because I marked it as a draft, do I then finalize it and do they go in, you know, they the, go on the, the town website. Are they mm -hmm. on the website? Okay. So how do I do that? Do I send them? To um, someone? yeah, you can just send me a word doc and I just put it on our letterhead and then put it up online. Okay. Now you were going to put dates where you have the double X's or uh, numbers. I didn't correct those either. Okay. Uh, correct. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. And with all the... They were excellent. We're old eyes. So then spelling corrections, we good? Everybody in favor of approving the meeting? The, the, I can't even know. Favor. Yes. Favor. yes. Aye. Aye. We'll be Aye. Aye. We can't approve the minutes till they're um, corrected. <clears throat> We can't approve the minutes till they're corrected. No, so, you can uh, you can mo make a motion to accept them as amended, and then he can make everything that okay. we talked about, and then mm -hmm. that will be done. If you were to go rogue and then ad make additional edits, we would have to come back. Yeah. Um, okay. 
So I move. We I move. I move those. what Haley said. <laughs> yes. I second it. Okay. I accept All those the in favor of the amended meeting minutes. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Um, it's 6.32, Jean. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Our next meeting is not the second Thursday of November because it was Veterans Day. So it looks like it's the third Thursday, yes. November 16th at 5. Between now and then, um, I would ask that you email me if you're interested in going to visit the Northampton Senior Center and talk to their Council on Aging. Um, and if you would email me the goal you selected for the age and dementia, um, I greatly appreciate that. And in November, I think we'll probably be doing some updates um, with regards to our subcommittees as well. So we have a lot going on. So the next Thank meeting you. will be the 16th of November? Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Correct. Is there a motion to adjourn? So done. I'll make, a I'll, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Yep. Second. Second that a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all so much. Have a Thank wonderful you. evening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Bye, Good night. everybody. Good night. Good night. Yep. Okay. It was a pleasure. Bye.